A newborn with a rare heart defect requires open heart surgery right after birth. An infant suffers a relentless intestinal infection that threatens her life. A young girl experiences lengthy treatment for a foot deformity. And first-time parents get the shock of a lifetime when their baby is born blind with a cyst in her brain. Hello, I'm Emory King, and we want to thank you for being with us on this special day, a day for counting our blessings. And for the parents and relatives of sick children, it's a day of reflection on what it means to be healthy and strong. More than five million infants and children undergo surgery each year. When you have a sick or injured child, nothing is routine. That's why so many families rely on the Children's Hospital of Michigan for everything from simple outpatient procedures to more complex operations and treatment. Research suggests that having surgery in a place with dedicated pediatric experts results in fewer complications, better survival rates, and shorter hospital stays. So when a child needs an operation, our pediatric experts are always here. There's only one Children's Hospital of Michigan, and it's part of the Detroit Medical Center, the DMC, where taking care of children isn't just a small part of what we do, it's everything we do. We begin with the story of a couple whose dreams came true when they found out they were having a baby. But after the ultrasound to determine the baby's gender, Andrea and Jason Fabrizio of Roseville, Michigan were given some troubling news. When I got the call, that uh, she had a heart defect. I was uh, scared. I didn't know what to think. Baby Kenna had TGA, or transposition of the great arteries, which occurs when the two main arteries of the heart, the pulmonary artery and the aorta, are switched in position, or transposed, resulting in too little oxygen in the blood. It afflicts about five out of every 10,000 babies born in the United States and can be fatal if not corrected surgically. It's not something that you hear every day. You know, it's not a normal issue that we've ever heard of. So we were lost. We just, we had millions of questions to ask and at that moment in time didn't have anybody to answer our questions for us. The Fabrizios were referred to Dr. Hal Walters, Chief of Cardiovascular Surgery on staff at the Children's Hospital of Michigan. Dr. Walters has performed surgery on hundreds of children with Kenna's particular heart defect. We do an operation called an arterial switch operation. And in this operation, we restore pretty much normal anatomy. So what we do is we divide the lung artery, we divide the aorta, and we switch their position so that the lung artery will now come off the right ventricle. The aorta will now come off the left ventricle. The first time I met him just put me at such an ease that I felt like, well, he's got this and we're in good hands. <laughs> Andrea and Jason decided to give birth to Kenna at DMC Hutzel Women's Hospital so she could be treated right away by the experts at the Children's Hospital of Michigan. It turns out Kenna's parents made a wise choice to deliver at Hutzel. When she was born, Kenna's blood oxygen levels were so low, she was rushed to Children's to have an emergency procedure to open a hole between the receiving chambers of her heart. And just a few days later, Dr. Walters performed the arterial switch procedure to fix Kenna's heart defect. The arteries that, in Kenna's case that supplied blood to the heart muscle or the coronary arteries were really uh, markedly abnormal. Instead of having two arteries, she had three arteries, and two of those arteries came off of the wrong place. And so in order to move those arteries was very, very difficult and required some special techniques. Hearing about the coronary arteries was extra cause for concern, but I still had a complete confidence in him that he was gonna do everything he could for my baby. Despite the complicated nature of Kenna's heart defect, the surgery was a success. I was elated when Dr. Walter said everything went smoothly according to plan, that um, he predicted everything would be just fine. Um, it was definitely a relief. <laughs> Two years later, 
Little Kenna is running around like any other active two-year-old. She's also welcoming her new baby sister into the world. You would never guess that she had open heart surgery. She's extremely active, very bubbly. She's not shy. Do it again, slam dunk. She loves to color, she loves to play doctor, she loves to dance. I was surprised because I thought with the issue of the heart that she was not gonna be able to do many of the activities that a kid could do. And she can run with the best of them. I don't think there will be any lasting uh, uh, adverse effects for Kenna. I expect she'll have a perfectly normal life and be able to do anything that she wants to do. She doesn't seem to have the kind of personality of a little girl who's going to let anybody limit her. My experience with the doctors, the staff, all of them, they've been nothing short of amazing. There's not enough thanks I could give in this world. I mean, they fixed her. She's perfect. Couldn't ask for it. Anything better. We actually watched her bowel die. It fell apart into little pieces. There is a place where people go to transcend limitations. When you have a spinal cord injury, you come down here and you push the limits. To help heal themselves from the inside out. I've been coming to the Rehab Institute of Michigan for about a year now. I've come leaps and bounds. This is a place where hard work pays off. It's a miracle. I went from a walker to jogging 10 minutes. The Center for Spinal Cord Injury Recovery at the Rehabilitation Institute of Michigan. The difficult we do immediately and the impossible takes a little bit longer. Waiting days for a doctor's appointment can be a big worry, especially when it's your child. That's why the Children's Hospital of Michigan has made it simple to see expert specialists. Introducing Call Today, No Delay. Get an appointment to see a pediatric specialist right away, even the same day. You can do it yourself or ask your child's pediatrician about seeing a Children's Hospital specialist. Come in when your child needs to. Call today, no delay. When little Fatima Atwe was born, she seemed to be perfectly healthy. But a few weeks later, she developed severe diarrhea. After days with no improvement, the concerned Atwe family took baby Fatima to a local hospital where doctors decided her condition was serious enough to send her to the emergency department at the Children's Hospital of Michigan. Dr. Joseph Lelly, surgeon in chief at Children's, was one of Fatima's doctors. She had such a severe infection in, um, that it challenged the blood supply to a major portion of her, of her intestine. And she, instead of responding quickly to routine measures, she kept deteriorating. As doctors tried to figure out what was wrong with Fatima, she had a cardiac arrest. Medical professionals trained in neonatal resuscitation were at Fatima's bedside instantly to keep the one-month-old infant alive. Once she was stable, abdominal x-rays revealed the infection was continuing to spread, and her swollen intestines were making it hard for her to breathe. Doctors determined her only chance for survival was surgery. Dr. Michael Klein, Philip Hart Chair of Pediatric Surgical Research on staff at the Children's Hospital of Michigan, performed the operation. After we opened up Fatima's abdomen, we removed all the intestines from the abdomen so that we could carefully examine them. Uh, when we found that all of the intestine looked equally bad, uh, we decided that the best thing was to leave them outside the abdomen so that she'd be able to breathe, and we covered them in this plastic bag uh, so that we could care for her in the meantime. We kept watching her and supporting her with antibiotics, with the breathing machine to breathe for her. Time passed, and Fatima became more and more sick. We actually watched her bowel die. It just turned black, fell apart into little pieces, and you know, settled back down into the abdominal cavity. I was certain that with that much dead intestine inside that she would die in a few days. Fatima's mother, Bara, of Dearborn, Michigan, kept a constant vigil at her daughter's bedside. 
Her husband, Fadl, was out of the country during Fatima's illness, and both of Fatima's parents spoke very little English, so Bara's sister stayed close by to act as an interpreter. My feeling it was very bad for her as a mother. I was feeling the pain that my daughter was feeling. I went and I met this doctor in Lebanon. I took the file for Fatima and tell him my daughter, now she's getting treated at Children's Hospital. Her doctor is Dr. Klein. He goes, stop there. When he said Dr. Klein, he said, don't worry, your daughter, she's in a good hands. So the Atwi family put their faith in God and the experts at the Children's Hospital of Michigan. And miraculously, over the coming months, Fatima started getting better. We decided that we should re-explore the abdomen to find out what intestine was there and if there was anything we could hook together. Dr. Klein called Bara's sister, Rana, to tell her the news, and she called Bara. I want to tell you that Dr. Klein called us and he just told Azam, your daughter, some of her intestine went back life inside of her stomach. She starts screaming, like you can't hear her noises screaming, like she's getting loudy, happy, you know. When we re-operated on Fatima, we found that most of her bowel was dead. Probably 75 to 80 percent of her intestine was gone. We found about 50 centimeters of bowel that was left, uh, and we put those two ends together. Following the surgery, Fatima was put on intravenous nutrition as her main food source, and her body continued to heal. After her discharge from the hospital, Fatima became one of the first patients at the Children's Hospital Intestinal Rehabilitation Program, also known as CHIRP. In that team, there is a pediatric surgeon, there is a pediatric GI specialist, a pharmacist, a nutritionist, social worker, nurse practitioner, and physical therapy and occupational therapy. So all those different disciplines see her all at one time so that we can provide a unified care plan for her, kind of a one-stop. As Fatima nears her fifth birthday, she continues to surprise her doctors and is eating all her food by mouth. We have close to 40 or 50 children out in the community that are on various amounts of enteral and IV nutrition, but she's the star of the whole group. She has a very short intestine, but she is able to absorb enough nutrition to be off her IV nutrition. Fatima is a real ambassador for us. She is a very outward personality. I think it's because she has had all of these people that she's gotten to know over these couple years now, and she considers us her friends. And so it's like a social event when she comes to the clinic. You would never know that she'd suffered through all of these events. I think that her future will be whatever she wants to make of her future. My dream is for Fatima to grow up, go to school, learn, to be a future doctor, to treat other kids like she got treated from other doctors for the same problem. Thank you, Dr. Klein. Thank you so much. I love you, Dr. Klein. All the surgery doctors were nice. But Dr. Klein, he's my special doctor. I want to thank Dr. Klein and all the staff at Children's Hospital because of him and God's hand. He kept her alive till this day. Look at her right now. She's on my hands. Perfect. My first thought is, is she ever going to walk? I didn't want anybody looking at her like she was different. This is where heart doctors throughout the Midwest are bringing their toughest cases, where specialists from around the world come to learn, where patients who couldn't be saved before are being saved. The all-new State of the Heart DMC Heart Hospital. This is Detroit rising, medicine advancing, the future unfolding. The new DMC Heart Hospital. This changes everything. 
There is a place where people go to transcend limitations. When you have a spinal cord injury, you come down here and you push the limits. To help heal themselves from the inside out. I've been coming to the Rehab Institute of Michigan for about a year now. I've come leaps and bounds. This is a place where hard work pays off. It's a miracle. I went from a walker to jogging 10 minutes. The Center for Spinal Cord Injury Recovery at the Rehabilitation Institute of Michigan. The difficult we do immediately and the impossible takes a little bit longer. Shante Munker's second pregnancy was progressing as well as her first until some blood work revealed there might be a problem. Advanced testing showed that baby Elizabeth had not just one, but two club feet, meaning that both feet rotated in at the ankle. My first thought is, is she ever gonna walk? Um, my second thought is, is, you know, is she gonna have to have surgeries? Shantae's due date came, and she gave birth to Elizabeth at a local hospital. Shantae and her husband Ernie rejoiced over the health of their new baby but were concerned when they saw her feet for the first time. I wondered if it hurt her, and I didn't want anybody taking pictures or touching her feet. I didn't want anybody looking at her like she was different. They were just so odd looking. I'd never seen anything like it. They were upside down and turned in on their side. The Munkers of Farmington Hills, Michigan, were referred to Dr. Walid Yassir, chief of orthopedics at the Children's Hospital of Michigan. Dr. Yassir runs a club foot clinic that treats approximately 300 children per year who come from all over the region. The Clubfoot Clinic here at Children's Hospital of Michigan is something that started when I got here about seven years ago. Uh, and I designated Wednesday mornings as my Clubfoot Clinic to make it easier for the families. We do have all the resources necessary for them so that they can have one-stop shopping when they cover their visits. And I think that's what really sets our clinic apart. Elizabeth was 10 days old when we took her to see Dr. Sear for the first time. He said, okay. Let's get started. And he got started that day. I couldn't believe it. I thought we were just there for a visit to where he could determine what was going on, but he jumped right in feet first. There are a variety of surgical techniques to treat clubfoot, but Dr. Yassir prefers a non-surgical approach known as the Ponsetti method. This method uses a special technique for casting the child's leg over a period of time, followed by a minimally invasive heel cord lengthening procedure and the use of special braces for several years. Dr. Yassir is the only surgeon in Southeast Michigan certified in the Ponsetti method for treatment of clubfoot, and is also believed to be the only surgeon in the state of Michigan who actually trained under the late Dr. Ignacio Ponsetti. The goal is not to have a perfect looking foot that's stiff and painful, which is very often the outcome from surgical correction. The goal is to have a foot that fits in a shoe, that the child can walk on and do all activities on um, and is pain-free for the rest of their life. That's why I prefer the Ponsetti method. Elizabeth got the typical cast treatment, so we cast the children every week for about four or five weeks until their foot is nicely corrected. We then do that heel cord lengthening and then we go into the shoes and you wear the shoes full time for three months about 23 hours a day. And then we gradually bring the shoe wear down a couple of hours a month so that by the time the children are ready to walk, they're just wearing the shoes night and nap time. And at age three, we then will give them a trial off in terms of seeing how the foot looks. And if we see any signs of recurrence, they'll go back into their shoes for night and nap time for about six months. When he first told us that it was gonna take three years, it was, oh my gosh, that is such a long time. But the three years flew by like there was nothing. I mean, it was, it was like, a blink of an eye. She's very nice and flexible. Elizabeth can expect a pain-free foot with great mobility and absolutely nothing else to worry about. She's going to go through life with as normal of a foot as she can have. She's not going to have pain. She's not going to have stiffness. If she wants to play sports, she can do it. If she wants to dance like a ballerina, she can do it. She can do everything she wants. <laughs> Her feet are the most beautiful feet in the world. And she gets a little boo-boo on it, and I'm like, oh, we can't let anything happen to those feet. They're better than what I expected at the beginning, because I didn't think he'd be able to do what he did. If you looked at her, you wouldn't be able to tell that anything was ever wrong with her. Elizabeth is doing so well now that uh, I can't keep her inside the house. She just wants to run. She does everything that a normal three-year-old girl 
can do. And that's all thanks to Dr. Yusir. It's unbelievable. I was just so shocked and could only think, my baby's blind and she has a brain issue. This is where heart doctors throughout the Midwest are bringing their toughest cases, where specialists from around the world come to learn, where patients who couldn't be saved before are being saved. The all-new State of the Heart DMC Heart Hospital. This is Detroit rising, medicine advancing, the future unfolding. The new DMC Heart Hospital. This changes everything. Waiting days for a doctor's appointment can be a big worry, especially when it's your child. That's why the Children's Hospital of Michigan has made it simple to see expert specialists. Introducing Call Today, No Delay. Get an appointment to see a pediatric specialist right away, even the same day. You can do it yourself or ask your child's pediatrician about seeing a Children's Hospital specialist. Come in when your child needs to. Call today, no delay. In her four short years of life, Avery Devereaux of Royal Oak, Michigan, has had more challenges than many people have in a lifetime. Looking at her today, you'd never know she's endured 21 surgeries. But there was a time when Avery's parents, Anne and John Devereaux, weren't sure if their baby girl would survive. With just two weeks left to go in Anne's pregnancy, they were shocked to learn that Avery had a cyst on her brain almost the size of a tennis ball. They were giving us different scenarios and um, didn't really have any concrete answers. Avery was delivered by C-section at a local suburban hospital and was quickly taken into NICU. Anne and John waited anxiously for news about their baby girl. Ophthalmologist came in and uh, said that they wanted to talk to us about Avery and we thought they were in the wrong room at first. You know, we said, no, we're waiting for a neurosurgeon. Um, you know, Avery has a, a fluid cyst in her brain. And they said, well, no. They just gave us a pretty basic explanation that she wasn't passing her newborn eye test. I was just so shocked and could only think, my baby's blind and she has a brain issue. It was kind of like a sucker punch. It was almost like kind of starting over again. Avery was diagnosed with Peter's anomaly, a rare genetic disorder that, in Avery's case, caused scarring of the corneas, pupils, and irises, as well as severe glaucoma. The family was referred to Dr. John D. Rorty, Chief of Ophthalmology at the Children's Hospital of Michigan. He agreed to see us after hours because he knew how worried and anxious we were. I felt immediately comfortable with him and knew that we were in the right hands. When she was born, uh, I believe all she could do is see shadows and light, lights on, lights off. No formed vision at all. If we did not do anything for the eyes uh, surgically, she would have been left uh, probably with light perception vision at best, and most likely because of the pressure or glaucoma in the eye, she would have been totally blind. Dr. Rorty worked in collaboration with Dr. Stephen P. Dunn ophthalmologist and cornea specialist on staff at the Children's Hospital of Michigan to come up with a surgical plan to improve Avery's eyesight. In her first operation at seven weeks old, Dr. Rorty relieved the pressure in her eyes from the glaucoma and Dr. Dunn performed a corneal transplant. What we wanted to do is uh, establish a clear visual pathway so light would not be uh, blocked by the scar tissue but would be uh, able to pass on through to the back of the eye, to the retina. Dr. Rorty and Dr. Dunn definitely made the whole process, if it's possible, easier um, because they were so confident. They had seen this before. A lot of doctors didn't have experience with Peter's anomaly. So the fact that we had two doctors in Michigan that were specialists made us feel very lucky. While little Avery was receiving treatment for her vision by the experts at the Children's Hospital of Michigan, she also had surgery to remove the fluid from her brain cyst by a surgeon at another hospital. Unfortunately, complications arose and Avery developed bacterial meningitis. We knew that she needed to be seen by pediatric specialists who knew how to deal with a small child. So we took her right to Children's Hospital uh, we never looked back. The Devereaux's met with Dr. Sandeep Sood, 
neurosurgeon on staff at the Children's Hospital of Michigan. Avery's meningitis and her previous brain surgeries just terrified us. Dr. Sood was very reassuring. Bacterial meningitis had left her with the scarring of the channel which lets the fluid out from the center of the brain, as a result of which she had developed progressive hydrocephalus. Hydrocephalus is a condition in which the fluid which is made within the center of the brain, instead of being able to flow out and drain normally, is obstructed. And if the pressure goes up very high, it can press on the brain to the point that the child can become comatose and eventually die. Dr. Sood and his team performed multiple surgeries, including placing a shunt inside Avery's brain to drain the built-up fluid. And through it all, little Avery has kept on toughing it out day by day. Avery is now four years old and has had 15 eye surgeries and six brain surgeries. Good job. Avery's brain today is considered stable, but um, she does have some residual issues from everything that's happened, and that includes developmental delays and mild cerebral palsy. But I think she's doing great for what she's been through. As far as Avery's eyesight, she has what's called functional vision, which means with her glasses on, she can move around comfortably in familiar places and can see objects that are very close to her. In unfamiliar places, she walks with a cane. She certainly has good enough vision where I think with a visual aid, she'll be able to go to school, she'll be able to read, she'll be able to use a computer. Stories from your heart. Where's your heart? Where's your heart? Long term for Avery, we have to watch her very carefully. However, she's been stable now for quite a while, and my hope is that she'll maintain her good functional sight and mobility sight. She is a tough kid who's cooperative and has an amazing capacity to play and not worry about things. And I think a lot of that comes from the support from her family. Okay, see you later. Bye-bye. Our experience at Children's has been phenomenal. You feel like they're friends and they have seen cases like Avery time and time again. They understand that this is a really, really hard thing to go through. What I've been most happy working with Dr. Rorty and Dr. Dunn and Dr. Sood is the fact that I, I do completely trust them. And I don't think that you can really go through these kinds of medical issues on a long-term basis if you don't have complete trust in your doctors. On this day of thanks, the Children's Hospital of Michigan wants to thank parents for entrusting us with the care of their precious little ones. For more than 125 years, we have been devoted to caring for no one but children and we'll continue to be here for many, many more. If you'd like to learn more about the important work we do here at Children's, please visit childrensdmc.org because we're always there, just for them. Thanks for spending time with us today. I'm Emory King, and we wish you and your family a very happy Thanksgiving. <laughs>